Free Cup Studio in Seoul. This is the GSL. Down come the And we're back. It's time for the losers match. This is one I think is going to be very tough for our player, Jock G. Impact is looking pretty, pretty damn scary. Uh, yeah. He was holding his own against stats. Totally. Uh, he did lose, and I think, honestly, there's no shame in losing to stats, especially the fashion in which Impact lost that series. Yeah. He still looked like a terrifying Zerg player. All the pro gamers in Korea are saying that Impact is at another level. Jock G, one of the, um, I guess you could say, most storied players. Hmm. Going all the way back to the very, very, very early days of the GSL, and still somebody who can compete today. Yeah. Where we have a lot of the great players are unable to actually uh, have either chosen to, to stop playing StarCraft 2 or have not managed to get into that upper ech echelon. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I like Chachi. I, me too. I love his play style uh, as well. Yeah. I, I feel like this is a, a hard match for him. Just his TVZ, I don't like as much as his TVP or his TBT even, to be honest. And I feel like to beat Impact in this matchup, you're gonna need a certain oomph. Like, you're gonna have to really hit like a super strong macro push. I don't think he's gonna die to much else. And I don't know if Jockchi really has that in him here, especially on this first map, Ascension to Ire. That's a tough one for Jockchi versus Impact. Code S, Daybreak. When the lights come out. I agree with what you're saying. I don't know if Jockji can realistically um, push through impact in, in a game like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, and it, that that kind of like Titan makes me think EX1. about uh, if he does end up winning this, uh, impact does. What does what does him versus class look like? But look at this. I guess it's time to cheese. And I think well, that this is a great choice for this map and this matchup. I was wondering this before the game started. Oh my God. Well, that's why you can't beat Impact, that's man. Why. He doesn't die too much. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. You gotta you gotta really be a good player to kill this guy. And thing is, I think it's Let's a good he, choice. See if he pulls the Overlord in time. So that he yeah. doesn't even know that he knows. Oh yeah, he will. He's Impact. Oh, oh well. never mind. He just lets it sit there. Yeah. And so he's gonna send drones out here. Okay. This I, isn't. This is actually not what I what I expected no, uh, him I to do. Think this would but be the way. But if he can kill one SCV and so that the second Rax doesn't finish, that's gigantic. Unfortunately, the RNG here is yeah. in favor of a Jock G. That this, if this was StarCraft One and me playing, that SCV would have died immediately. <laughs> the drones would have come out and it would have exploded itself. Oh! Oh, oh! oh my God! Good, good going by Jockji, getting that Marine away for now. This is crazy, man. You see this? I actually really did not expect this exact oh! reaction. Oh! oh! Okay, drones turn around. No, they're not. Oh. Psych, psych, bro. Dude, smooth drone maneuvers. Oh, I thought not really. I that one away. Okay, so he's lost four, five. Yeah. Lings are coming out, but he's I... gonna have queens now too. I think the rush is over, but there's a factory on the way already. Okay, so this game's already been probably the weirdest TBC we've casted this year. I feel like Impact has actually not handled it that well either. Yeah, it... from even letting that Overlord get seen, uh, the when micro... the rush started to then not controlling the drones well, to then losing that Overlord, mm. uh, not having that in the right spot. By the way, I appreciate the rallies he has to get his Marines in there. Like, a lot of people will rally onto another Marine, but if that Marine dies, then your rally goes away. Yeah. You can shift-click rally to every Marine you have. Smart. But uh, anyways, that I, I agree. That was a weird way that he tried to hold it. But the thing is, uh, if Chachi had microed a little less well, he might have just killed, like, every Marine with his drones immediately. Yeah. You know, those four drones had died. Like, they were almost up the ramp when they died, too. So... Just a slightly different micro from either side, and maybe he crushed this, you know? So I don't fault him for trying to do that. I bet you that's something that he pulls off in practice. That type of defense. What do you have to say about that, Tasteless? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm actually curious though, because um, even though the uh, rush did not, the rush was denied by Impact. They didn't do a great job, but I'm curious what the follow up is. Mm. You know, when you do two barracks like that on the low ground, you're hoping to do a lot of damage. Um, and really crippled the, the Zerg. And I, granted, like I said, Impact didn't do a fantastic job holding it. I mean, there seem to be a lot of hiccups in there. I still feel like uh, I still feel like it's going to be kind of tricky for a player like Jokshi to still come out on top against Impact. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like even if he wins this game, which is I don't I don't know if he's going to win this. Still, you th well, I mean, I put him at an advantage right now. For sure, you know he he killed four drones. There's tons of lost mining time. And he's got reactor aliens out right now. It's, that is true. He's blocked the third base. Look at that. Whoop. That's a serious block. Like he landed a at the other third, and now has aliens here at this third before it can even be made. Like I definitely prefer Jockji's position this game, but even so, I agree. I think that uh, he can pick up the other two maps. But this is the map that's really good for impact. You know, there are some redeeming features here for TV. Z, but I feel like these two, their styles matching up against each other, this is the map that Impact must win. Do you believe that possibly um, this game is going to somewhat look like some of the previous games we saw of Jock G already, where he comes out with some kind of push and tries to close it right in mid-game? I think he's kind of mech. So, no? Oh, is he? Like, uh, I, well, I'm, I'm not 100% looking more sure, but... G's base here. Um, certainly, yeah, he is going to mech. I'm... 90% sure right now. Like he's Armory's coming down now. Yeah. So. I, I, I guess probably for some Hellbats. And he's making Cyclones and also Cloak Banshee, so that's all very good against Roach. Right? And then the Hellbats kind of clean up the other things. It's definitely some cool ideas coming out of Jokji here. Look at, see how his name here is all lowercase? Yeah, still, still looks, looks good, fine. Right? I was right about that for sure. Okay, this is a funny moment. With yeah. <laughs> the, Normally, it's in the Viking in when the rush has started, not before. Yeah. So that it can go undetected. Now he just kills it and yeah. <laughs> brings all his units down here. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> More Banshees on the way. Note Jokji being very cautious as he tries to edge in. Mm -hmm. He does not want to overextend. If Impact wins one or two fights here, then Impact suddenly has all the freedom to grow and develop. And a player like Impact, that's the last thing you want to let him do as a Zerk player. Mm -hmm. Is, is get too much of oh. an economy going for him. Double eBay. So this, I guess he is going to go into bio. That is extremely late bio to be going into, though. Good good building placement there, but <laughs> not on the other side. Okay, already five drones down. He does manage to slip by the queen. These drones have been pulled. Oh One or boy. two good shots, and he can really roast these. Okay, ten, 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 and he's not done yet. 13 down. Okay, 13 is not bad. No, that's good. Oh, and there's Cloak Banshees over here, too. Hmm. Jokshi has really done a great job of screwing up impact this game, that's for sure. It's interesting, because this is how Jokshi's always looked as a player. He's always been able to get in there and do damage. He knows how to attack. Yeah. So we're now at 17 workers killed. The Queen actually under fire. Jokshi's smelling a weakness there. I wonder about this infestation pit. What do you think about that? What is the meaning? I don't know. Like, is he going to go fungal or something? Like, he's got some roach tech out. He's getting ranged attack. So it, it makes me think that we could see some fungal growth. Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea, right? Especially just knowing the kind of player Jokji is. Yeah. He tends to want to try to push and, and really deal his damage based off his micro. And a lot of awkward oh. builds that he opens up with. Maybe um, Impact wants to try to hard counter that. Just a hive uh, instead. So okay. um, it, this could just be him rushing up to ultras because of how late the bio is coming out. Um, Which because, makes sense. Yeah, like if you go for like a Hydra Bane type comp, uh, they kind of have to go for a C chunk push before you hit... Uh, ultras, but uh, this is such a strange game. It's not really following those lines. Like, he has Hydralis tech, but he's making more roaches than Hydras at the moment. Some siege tanks are being made. Stim is not done yet. We're almost nine minutes in. Hmm. 
Very, very peculiar one, this one, so far. Well, I think it started out pretty action-packed, and both players are now, for the most part, staying back, minus the Hellions that ran in there and, and got a lot of damage off on those drones. Mm. Uh, but now, Jockey's going to try to push. I guess you can't blame him. Stim is just about to finish, and he's already got 1-1. One, one. Yeah. He may not be totally clear on where the upgrades are uh, here for Zerg, but he's going to come in now. This is a, a pretty serious army. Uh, scanning, taking out some of these creep tumors. And we see Ravagers being morphed here, but the Ravagers are actually going to be in range of the Marines. He's got to be careful about that. Yeah, Stim Marines just coming up. No medivacs even there, but a good concave here from Impact, pushing everything back, and he will hold on. Yeah, this is, um, this is what I was afraid of here with going against somebody like Impact. As cute uh, as Jock G's attacks are early on, I feel like the longer a game goes on for a player like Impact, the better of a position he's going to be in here. And you can see the idea behind what Jock G's trying to do with some of these attacks, like push in there, have those Cyclones target that hatchery. Um, and in a lot of games, this would work. But against Impact, he basically just holds everything off. Yeah. You know, good Zerg players, it looks like you're never able to attack them. Yeah. It and... I think that's what Jock G is experiencing in this game, is that he tries to go out and Impact is just there and smashes him down. And even in bumpy parts of the game, like that initial rush, the follow-up attacks here from Jock G. Jock G probably thinking, okay, well, I killed four drones at the start. I killed something like 17 drones later on. Surely this push is going to be fine for me. It comes yeah. out, it's like way too many roaches and hydras and ravagers. You and I talked about this in some other groups, especially yeah. about like the fourth place finishers in some of the groups, where it's like this guy is good enough to be in Code S, and yeah. it's a very top, good top player. Top 32 in the world. Yeah, but like some of the strategies we see tried and, and ways that we see played by some of these players that get a little bit lower that aren't hitting round of 16 very often is kind of like... Okay, this beats a lot of players, but when you're playing the world's best, there's a slightly different way that you do have to play. Yeah. And, uh, well, it, it's funny because we have so many good players, but there is a, it seems to be a large difference in skill here. Ooh. Now, hold on. That was an attack. That was the uh, kind of attack that Joxie was looking for mm -hmm. for probably the last five minutes of this game. He actually got in there, he sniped down that hatchery. And now it's three base versus three base. In fact, I think Jockchi is about to take a fourth. There's a command center that just finished. Okay, so, I mean, it, Vipers are out, a couple of them. He's going Ultralist Cavern. Decent sized army for impact here. You know, Jockchi is sitting here defensively with his siege tank. So this is not looking too good for him, but okay. this attack should not end up killing him. That's for sure. Okay, harpooning that one tank, pulling it in. The problem, though, is that even though Jock G Prince had sniped that hatchery, Impact was already maxed out. Oh my god, meanwhile, there's this attack happening up here. So, when this is all said and done, it's going to be 30 or more uh, SCVs that have been killed off here. And he killed a lot of the Zerg army, though, as well. The Vipers yeah. go down, most of the units over there go down, but the economy is hurt from Jock G. That means he needs to keep going with this attack. Yeah, he needs to try to push through, keep that damage uh, coming out. Now, Zerg is not making drones with this. Ouch, not even canceling that. Okay, this game has actually gotten super crazy. Yeah. So it's a, one player with about 40 workers to another player with 80. Um, but Impact continues to grow. Now, I didn't think that uh, Impact was going to lose that entire army after he was attacking that initial outpost. But it seems like maybe Impact well, got a little bit greedy. Yeah, I was surprised actually that he attacked in. There was five tanks defensively. Yeah. He could see at least four of them, I would say. And yeah. like a good amount of bio. The thing is, I think Jack G didn't even necessarily have to pull his SCVs there. But regardless, that that was kind of a weird attack because it's like you're the onus is actually on Terran to do the push. Right. He has to do the push because you're going up to Ultralisk Tech. This this well, army doesn't do well against lots of Ultras. Let's think about uh, how those games against stats looked. You know, he had a lot of very technical attacks that um, I think against almost anybody would win the game, but some of these other players, they actually hang on. And now Jock G has this counter push coming up here. It's very important that Impact holds this off. Doesn't okay. seem like Impact has Ooh. his entire army together here. Good spread of siege tanks here, and he's been remaking Roach Hydra. Hard to remake that very well. And Ultra joins the fray as well. Okay. The blinding clouds coming down now. All the tanks have been wiped out. 
Meanwhile, another small drop. This uh, expansion here in the center right has been getting a lot of attention. Doesn't seem like Impact has ever been able to mine from there for too long. Oh, okay. big drop going towards the main base. All that Impact has to do right now, though, is stay calm and deal with all this, because he's going to have Kitness plating, and he's building his Ultralis count. Again, this army's going to have a hard time when there's a lot of Ultralis out. Chokchi's trying to make a lot of Marauders and Siege Tanks, but I don't know if that'll actually end up being enough unless he does a lot of damage with these drops. Okay, this is crazy. If he can hold off this army up here and take out the Hive, that would be huge. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, uh... Impact is trying to chase Jock G away. Jock G might be able to kite that, though, if he keeps stimming and just avoiding the Ultras actually hitting yeah. his army. And that's what we're seeing here. This has actually been a pretty back-and-forth game. Uh, Parasitic Bomb going down, trying to reduce the amount of healing going on here. Jock G absolutely Dude. everywhere right now. Yeah, he's kind of just barely winning on every front. Yes, yes. And if, if Impact doesn't stabilize, things are going to fall apart pretty fast. You see there's just enough range, just enough mm -hmm. Marauders. I don't know if that attack up at the top was uh, was taken care it of. It got taken care of, yeah. It was. Okay, so that got cleaned up. And, okay, so he still is holding on. It's one of these kind of down and dirty games, but Impact just having enough. We're over on his side of the map. His rallies are coming out quickly, and he continues to hold. The upgrade's pretty much tied right now. But as more Ultras pop out, this is going to become harder. Like, you can continue to try to do these multi-pronged harassments, but if they aren't gaining you a lot of value, the overall army that Impact is creating is super strong. But now, finally, Jokchi getting into Liberator tech, adding a starport, getting that fusion core as well, two Liberators at a time. That's going to be a much better way to deal with these Ultras. It's funny, though, despite how much damage Jokchi's doing, whenever you glance down at the supply, Impact is just huge. It makes you wonder, like, is Jokchi really actually getting an advantage out of this? Jokchi just a little bit ago at about 100 supply. Keep in mind, if Jokchi loses one of these big fights and it's not a fair exchange, I think Impact could then go all the way across the map and just roll him. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree with that, but Jokchi's doing everything he needs to do. Like, he's keeping him very busy with these drops, especially the Marauder drops. You know, and targeting these hatches, Jeez. he's actually going to... Yep! He gets wow. that last one. Oh, good kill, good kill. But behind this, he's getting Liberator range, and he's going for Ghost Tech. And these are the things you need to fight against late game Zerg here. I'm, I mean, I'm impressed by Jokchi. He got a lead early on, and he's kind of finagling his way after getting to a position that I wasn't too fond of into, you know, this... This interesting spot where he's getting the right units, he's keeping him busy, he's canceling hatcheries, killing bases occasionally. But the army of impact is like way better at the moment. Well, it just seems like Jokchi's exhibiting why he's been in so many GSL code S's and he's very well respected. Mm -hmm. But he's going up against impact, which is, this guy really shows the modern 2018 Zerg. Yes. And I think we're seeing the reason why even Jokchi's style, which is, you know, he's sort of always looked like this in a lot of his games, being pretty good at pushing, aggressive, very reactionary. Uh, it seems like Impact is still hanging on. Now, this game is starting to even out here. Impact has basically got all his bases up. He's in a pretty good defensive position. He's not far away from maxing out. These ghosts are coming out, which are going to be very helpful against the Ultras. Uh, we're going to have to see how Jokchi can take on Impact in late game with all the tech basically yeah. finished. How good is his repositioning of Liberator Ghost? Uh, how good, how quick can he hit his snipes off as well? That's very important. Because these Vipers, if he just hits the right Viper spells coming up, this game can spiral out of control for Jokchi. He can lose a base instantly. Okay, Terran scanning. I think Jokchi may pull the trigger and try to come out now. Hmm. I don't can he push yet. Like he has a good amount of ghosts, I guess, coming out still. I want to see him sit back defensively for a minute. If he can like just deal with these vipers well, then I feel like he's in a much better spot to move forward. But if he starts moving forward into those vipers, that can be a little bit tougher. Okay, the liberators are now going to start leapfrogging forward. It's a lot this, of liberators. This center area is really helpful for Terran to try to set up as an outpost, mm -hmm. and then try to push through because you have pretty good circulation. Zerg, if they want to counterattack, they have to go all the way around your army. And I mean, there's so many liberators, it's almost comical. 
There's quite a few. He's going to set up turrets over here. Now, what is the game plan here from Impact? Is he serious about trying to attack over here in the center left location? Ooh! Whoa. Good EMPs. Oh! oh even sniping. So two of the ones he missed with the MP. It's uh, one Viper now. It's the only thing with energy. And immediately Jockji. Wow. He's that gonna was come super in. well done. Look at this. What a great move. Yeah, this is really smart. So he's, he's gonna kill that base for sure. Yeah, that in fact, gone. you can see Impact already giving up on it. He's, yeah. at, he's evacuating the drones right now. Wow. Great job on uh, Jockji here. But does this counterattack do enough? The Banelings are going to come up here. They'll be detonating on these SCVs, so that expansion does go down. Yeah, Jockji actually turning around with his army, realizing he can lose multiple command centers like this. Uh, <laughs> well, he's going to lose a lot of SCVs with this, still. These SCVs are not quite able to repair this in time. Okay, here comes a big attack up on the high ground. Impact oh decides to turn God. around. That parasitic bomb. Oh, oh my oh, god, it's so dirty. <laughs> oh, look how much damage that did. It's crazy. We almost never see that. Yeah. Well, it seems like he panic stacked them. He just wanted them sieged immediately. They are uh, very low on health now. Impact starting to run out of locations that he can safely control. If he loses this base over here, it's just the upper right base. It's the only thing that Impact has money coming in from. Loses a couple ultras there through those beautiful snipes as well. Okay, the hatchery should go down. There it is. But impact continuing to take out Jockey's SCVs. Damn. 39 to 72 workers. Just so much damage all over the place here. And look how many SCVs are down there repairing the liberators. That's super important because he made corruptors at this point. If they were low on health, those corruptors would sweep through and kill them almost instantly. But now they're all green again. Okay, here we go. Harpooning some of those liberators. And it's now these uh, ghosts trying to snipe down the remaining corruptors. What does Impact have left mining? What does Jockji have left mining? <laughs> it does, doesn't matter. Jockji got down to 60 supply. He lost most of his army, and then he ended up losing too many SCVs back there. Uh, it was a crazy neck and neck game. Yeah, that when was. You, when you consider how much damage Jockji was doing, a lot of times so low on supply. Had Impact not been counterattacking, I think Impact would have lost that game. For sure, you're right about that. The only expansion Impact had in the upper right, or the, excuse me, the only one that he had was in the upper right. Mm -hmm. That, by the end, was the last place he was mining from. Yeah. And Jockji just had basically nothing mining then because of all those counterattacks. That's right. Do you remember how that game started? Double proxy Rex yeah. with drones chasing it everywhere. That was sloppily held. Man. What a wild game. This is a great night of games, by it the really way. Is. Well, everybody's so good in this group. Everything's been 2-1 so far. I'm digging it. Will we get have... another? I'm hoping so. Yeah. Uh, we are going to go to game number two. The map will be Catalyst. Okay. Uh, Catalyst and Odyssey, definitely smaller than Ascension Ire. So that kind of works towards Jack G's favor. We'll see what he can get GSL done. Season 1, Code S, Daybreak. When the lights come out Titan EX-1, Jockji Titan EX-1, Impact. Such a close group. <sighs> I do feel like Jockji's still uh, the weakest in this group, but yeah. I, I want to point out he is still an absolutely terrifying player. Yes. And you can see the, the way his style works. I mean, when he goes down, he goes down swinging. Mm -hmm. He's a very good player. Mixes it up oh, uh, quite a bit. You know, like uh, really tactical plays quite often. And, you know, against a play style like that, if you make one or two mistakes, let's say, as impact, you will lose the game. Yeah. yeah. He, he like, stayed surprisingly calm considering how many hatches were killed, almost killed, canceled. Uh, things were going wrong for him a lot of the time. In some ways, uh, Jockji reminds me of TY, but much less refined. It's like a frenzied TY. Yeah, I kind of know what you mean because Ty can be a very tactical player, also. Yeah. But 
But I feel like TY is his practice. Like at, at this exact moment, in 80% of my games, if they're doing this and I put my army here, then this wins. Where I feel like Jock G is all just scrambling, looking around the map. He sees an army move in one direction. He says, okay, let's try to come down here yeah, and attack yeah. here. And that's why sometimes it's working and sometimes it's failing miserably. Yeah, he. he I was thinking he reminded me a little bit of like Bion, not micro wise, although he has good micro, but like aggression wise. Uh, he doesn't try to brute force necessarily his aggression all the time. He does sometimes, but like he just he has this mindset of getting over there and mixing it up. Well, I think the big difference is that he doesn't seem to have Bion's control. Yeah. Bion so cleanly uh, stutter step micros every time. Yeah. Like only. It who, who else has his control? Like, Innovation? Is that the only uh, other Terran that really micros at Beyond level? No, I actually think Beyond's the only guy who micros the way he does. If, if you look at how Innovation micros, Innovation usually has more. And then th when I think of Innovation, I think of all these Banelings coming forward. Yeah. And Innovation splits and arcs out. Usually the size of, like, two, two StarCraft two screens. <laughs> um, and then holds everything and collapses back in on the Zerg, and the Zerg yeah. taps out. Where Bion, I just see a really big Protoss army chasing a bunch of Marauders with one medevac, <laughs> and they're stimming, and they're, and they're stutter step microing, and somehow he kills off way more than he ever should have. And then we go somewhere else on the map, and it's a, it's a drop. Yeah. And there's Stalkers trying to target down these Marines, but the Marines pick up yeah. the one Marine and juggle it back out. And then Bion sort of wins there. And then Beyond comes in with a push. I feel like you have a, a whole book in you about this, but... Um. And then T.Y. is like, he goes out on the map and he scans and he just kills the Observer. Yeah. And we're like, whoa! Yeah. And then he goes back. And then he comes out again and scans and kills the next Observer that's out on the map. Then he picks up and drops everything in the main. I, I get you. And then Maru's like, <laughs> watch this! And just picks up after winning a fight and drops in the main and wins the game. fan fiction. Yeah. God. <laughs> I've been casting all these players. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that being said, it's so I, cold in here, I by the way, that mean... Artosis has put gloves on. Yeah, I know. It's freezing. But um, I, I, I'm tempted to lie to the audience and say that you have a special glove you cast, cast with. My on. casting glove. Yeah, it's, just, it's like a Michael Jackson glove yeah, you wear. It's all oh, sequins on it. That's right. Little Protoss sequins. Um, well, I didn't mean that they micro in the same way. I mean that the quality of their micro is the same. And I'm telling you, based off that long diatribe no, I just you were, gave you... What you said is that they micro differently, is what you said, and I agree with that. They don't micro... They, they don't have the same micro moves, but I feel like they have guys, the same listen, quality. listen, what Artosis is trying to say is that all these guys are the same. If, if I could just try to interpret <laughs> what he's trying to say. And yeah. I'm here to tell you that's not true. You got me. Okay. By the way, oh. uh, this is like Hellions and some Banshees against uh, a Ling drop plus a Queen drop coming over with Roaches. So, Impact is playing it quickly here. Zergs never play a normal game on this Whoa. map. Look at that. Look how funny that looks. Yeah. It's a lot easier if you have a prism. There's a drop right into the mineral line. Okay, Ling's now hitting the SCVs. Look at this. <laughs> so <laughs> this funny. looks so hilarious. Yeah. Okay, the SCVs have been pulled down now. Ravagers are obliterating the wall in here at the front. Uh, taking a lot of damage on those queens. You gotta be careful about that. If the queens go away, the banshees come to play. Wow, StarCraft nursery rhymes. Okay, uh, this should supply, yeah, this does supply block Jokshi here. And in fact, I think naturally speaking, these rest of these depots will go down as well. So basically the units that Jokshi has right now are the only units he has to hold off this attack oh, geez, for the rest yeah. of the time being. That's funny, look at that. What was that like five depots that were killed? Yeah. Whole big depot wall. Okay, here we go. Right, First bunker right down. There. The other bunker's basically isolated. Uh, the corrosive viral artillery is coming down now. But there's he's still one tank and one liberator. Dude, he didn't hit that liberator. He I was know. throwing his piles everywhere, but that liberator did so serious damage. I can't believe the liberator didn't go down. Yeah. This this game might have a completely different outcome had that actually happened. Okay, and now but the it, drop lord is gone. It was 11 SCVs killed. Jokchi immediately had remade um, enough depots to get his supply back up. Well, where do we go from here? 
double Evo, double eBay, both on the way. Both of them realizing they need to get some upgrades going if this game is to continue. Layer on the way. Siege Shanks being made. I like that he's continuing to poke in with these these Ravagers. Ooh. The Siege Shank doesn't like it, though. Well, um... Obviously, the, the game is going to go on. I actually really thought that Impact was going to win that last fight. I think had his Corrosive Biles been a little bit cleaner. It may be, uh... Like, it, I... I'm not there's even sure what he was the biling because the SCVs weren't well, dying. He the didn't first, get the tank. He didn't get the Liberator. The first Biles went on the bunker, which I understand yeah, why yeah. he wanted to do that. But I actually think, okay, if you consider the fact that the Terran is supply blocked after you kill off the depots, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's a secret that only you and I and the people watching would mm -hmm. see because we are observing the game. But I yes. think it's pretty obvious if you kill five depots, well, then they can't make anything for a while. All you have to do, I think, is kill the Liberator and the tank because you will eventually take out the bunker. But the Liberator and the Tank are dealing damage at yeah. a much higher rate. And they're not going to be able to remake a Tank or a Liberator once it's gone. That's true. I okay. don't disagree. Here comes a counter push. I'm not sure how this is going to work out, though. There Three Siege Shanks. This seems like a little bit of a ragtag army here from Terran, but... Yeah, from Zerg as well, to be honest. Yeah, it's a scrappy game. The problem is, is when these Ravagers finish, he should be able to gross and buy all the tanks. Yeah. And then win the fight. Let's see where they go. All right, on to some of these tanks now. And he cleans that up actually pretty well. Loses eight drones in the meantime. Chakchi is mining off three bases now. It's a very healthy SCV count. I think actually impact and counterattack. Well, he's certainly doing that towards the third, and the units are going there because of that. But a drop going in the main base definitely could deal a lot of damage if all the units are out front. Hitting this SCV. Now going to go after the reactors. <laughs> It looks funny. Yeah. Looks like it blows up from one vial, but no. Okay, so he's picking up now. Keep in mind, that's a chunk of the army from Jokchi that's not there defending that base. But it does seem like overall Jokchi is just going to stabilize. Meanwhile, however, impact is growing at a pretty scary rate uh, going into Hive now. That is a very, very quick Hive from him. Uh, also adding in some Hydralisks. So that's kind of interesting. Certainly he'll get Vipers first off of this, but probably into Ultras once again. Okay, well, uh, the expansion that's being taken, interestingly enough, is probably the most pushable expansion yeah. that was logically available for Impact, so I'm not, I'm not sure if that's going to serve him well this game. I thought he was going to take the far left or the upper right, but yeah. most likely the far left. Kind of interesting. Um, so, what are all those roaches doing on the left-hand side of his main base? I think they're ready for a drop that's not going to come, so this is going to go down, no problem. And then these Marines can kill these Ravagers. They're really still sitting odd. there. <laughs> yeah, very odd game yeah. uh, from Impact. I'm so confused why he would expand there. Not like it's it's inherently bad, but it just I'm surprised. Yeah, it's especially considering the way that Jokshi plays. It's an interesting base for that reason. I don't know why. He obviously has a reason for it. Uh, Zergs in general don't play very normal on this map, but maybe I don't know. I I, I want to take guesses to it, but I just don't know why he's doing that. I'm sure some Zerg out there knows. So Viper's on the way. 2-2 two -two coming up. Quicker than Jock G's 2-2, two -two, so that's nice for impact. Okay. Uh, Jock going to try to push up. This will isolate uh, this up-and-coming expansion from being covered very easily. Ten more roaches on the way. Viper's coming out as well. I think he's going to let the hatch finish. No, he cancels it. Okay. Yeah. I was getting worried there. Because if he's going to let the hatch finish, that means that uh, Impact's ready to actually attack into this. Uh, and you know, if this army is now well positioned enough and the Ravager count is low enough, mm. I think that these tanks are going to cause a real problem. He can't quite get close enough to try to corrosive bile those tanks oh. without probably losing those Ravagers, Wait, too. He needs those Vipers with their energy over here ASAP to actually deal with these siege tanks. Okay, it looks like he has enough for some blinding clouds. Oh! oh. Go. Yeah, those are some sick blinding clouds right there. Two sea chanks still up in the back, but I mean, this is overwhelming at this point. Meanwhile, a roach drop down here. Impact, bigger, faster, stronger. 
Uh, this is a guy who's just very scary in the late game. And I don't know um, if he can stop this next attack, especially with these Roaches here. Four Roaches is enough for the Terran to have to pull back to try to help defend that maybe um, the attack to the front can actually just wipe out this base. Well, how much is here, actually? That's a lot of medevacs. We don't see exactly what the army looks like, though. Okay. Yeah, that's not that big. No, not at all. In fact, a lot of this is out of range of the tank. All right, blinding clouds going down. Forces those marauders forward. Ouch. Does pull back. Nice okay. yank in. And this base is going to go down. It certainly looks that way. Okay. Well, I guess impact is going to do it. GG. Impact takes that game and now goes off to face off against Classic in the final match in tonight's GSL Code S. Yeah, well played there by Impact. Definitely some kind of messy games, but that's where Jock G wanted to bring it. I think he was pretty successful in doing that. Uh, unable to win in the end, but definitely Jock G showing a lot of skill tonight. Well, Impact's managed to survive for the next best of three, but I will say Classic is the veteran by comparison. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna oh, see yeah, a new sure. era. Uh, of impact if he can manage to be classic. This is a real testing I, ground. I think he probably is going to be and him. Frankly, Classic's got a lot to prove here, too. He used to be a champion. Now he's just trying to stay in the GSL Codex. Guys, we'll be right back.